In the year 2029, Japan went into shambles due to a pandemic of the apocalypse virus. As a result, Japan became indebted to several other countries and started operating under the GHQ organization's strict rules. Ten years later, we find our main protagonist, Shuama, a teenage socially awkward student who doesn't know how to read the mood, most of it probably because he doesn't remember what happened in the past. On the way to his warehouse studio, he meets Inori Yuzurea, an internet singer for the band Egoist who is recovering from her wounds after stealing the Void Genome, a genetic weapon stored in a vial from GHQ and concealing it within her pet robot Funnel. Suddenly, the GHQ antibodies division led by Major Gin barges into the warehouse and captures Inori. Shu could only hide from the antibodies' presence but remembered Inori's request. In order to make amends, Shu decides to deliver the Void Genome to Gai Tsutsugami, the leader of the Undertaker's resistance group. Reaching the destination point, Shu gets pestered by some thugs but they get beaten by Guy. In order to locate the Void Genome, the antibodies decide to exterminate the residents of Rapongi. Under Guy's request, Shu goes to rescue Inori, protecting her from an enlave, a humanoid GHQ war machine. The attack shatters the vial containing the Void Genome, granting Shu the power of the king. This power allows a king to extract people's Void Genes. Each individual has a different form according to their heart's nature. To save themselves, Shu extracts Inori's void as a sword in order to destroy the enlave. When GHQ 2nd Lieutenant Daryl Yan, piloting an enlave named Steiner, intervenes, Shu is compelled to retreat with Inori and reassemble with the Undertakers. After praising the efforts of hacker Tsugumi and paraplegic enlave pilot Ice Shinomiya, Guy not only reprimands Inori for allowing Shu to absorb the void genome, as he had intended to use it himself, but he also states that Shu can no longer remain passive with the power he now possesses. Later, claiming this is their chance to show themselves to the world, the Undertakers intervene to stop the antibodies from executing a group of innocent civilians. The antibodies have been granted the independent authority to label anyone as infected. Due to that judgment, they can dispose of people as they desire. They launch an assault and deceive Darl into driving his enlave Steiner away from the GHQ command center in order to seize control of it. Guy reveals himself while Shu heads toward Doro, cuts through his cockpit, and extracts his void. GHQ tries to fire on Guy, but Shu uses Doro's void, a weapon that generates a multitude of barriers to shield Guy to deflect the lasers, destroying the antibodies. The following day, Shu still reminiscing about rejecting Guy's invitation to join the Undertakers is shocked to discover that Inori has transferred to his class. When Shu gets home after classes, he gets shocked as Inori has not only transferred to his class, but also moved in with him. On the other side, assigned by the Antibodies Director, Major Makoto Walt Segai is tasked to track a series of distribution hotspots for a genetic drug known as the Norma Gene. Shu and Inori meet up with Guy, who reveals that a student at Shu's school saw him during the Rapongi incident. Shu is tasked to confront each of his classmates, checking for a void in the form of shears held by the student nicknamed Sugar. Shu finds Sugar is his classmate Yahiro who's been faking his personality for all this time. By extracting his void, a scissors, Shu subdues an enraged Yahiro, but prevents Inori from killing Yahiro as both of them agreed upon keeping each other's secrets. However, on the following day, Yahiro betrays their promise and sells Shu out to the antibodies major Segai. Segai arrests Shu in front of his classmates and transports him to GHQ, where he remains silent about the Undertakers. As Segai transports Shu to the isolation ward, he reveals that Yahiro Hero's younger brother is a victim of the apocalypse virus and receiving treatment at the facility. This is the reason why Yahiro betrayed Shu. Segai also reveals that Guy intends to rescue a mass murderer named Kenji Kaido and gives Shu a pen-shaped transmitter to use when he comes into contact with Guy. Later that night, Guy disguised as a lawyer to attempt to enlist Shu's help in rescuing Kenji, but Shu refuses. Inori, while ignoring Guy's orders, breaks into the facility to rescue Shu, forcing Guy to change his plan on spot. On the way to meet Inori, Shu is protected by Ais 
When he encounters Kenji, he decides to extract his void in the form of a gravity manipulation device in order to stop the GHQ enlaves and rescue Inori, using her void to destroy every enlave around. When finally getting safe outside, Shu reluctantly accepts Guy's offer to rejoin him after the destruction of the facility, but he keeps Segai's transmitter and does not inform Guy of their exchange. Shu is brought to the Undertaker's headquarters, where Guy intends to hold a trial for him before he can officially join this resistance group. Ice is instructed to train Shu for the trial. After a day of rigorous training with members Argo Tsukushima and Ogumo, Shu meets Inori and discovers that Guy instructed her to under any means convince him to join the Undertakers. Shu felt heartbroken as he watches Inori enter Guy's room. Devastated, he ends up running into Ais, who cheers him up for his trial. Everyone thinks they're dating, but it's unknown to everyone that Inori is actually just administering a blood transfusion to Guy. Shu's trial is to engage in a simulated battle with Ais, their best enlave pilot, with the goal of gaining access to the vehicle placed behind her enlave Steiner. Shu only knows how to run but remembers his power as a king and extracts Argo's Void, a flashlight that temporarily creates blinding darkness. On the other side, Guy led a team on a mission to intercept the arrival of mercenaries at an airport and seize their supplies, but they end up being attacked by the Leucocyte, an orbiting satellite laser. Guy ends up being the only survivor from the attack. He informs the Undertakers about their next mission, to attack the dam where the Leucocyte control system is located, but Shu rejects this plan due to the number of members who may perish. Shu doesn't understand why everyone blindly follows Guy's orders, nor his real motives. On the other hand, Segai informs that he predicts the Undertakers to attack soon and prepares accordingly. In order to convince Shu to agree to be the key to of their mission, Inori secretly takes him to Guy while he receives another blood transfusion in a room by himself, he is weighed down by the lives lost during the leukocyte incident. Overhearing this conversation, Shu has a brief exchange with Guy, but ultimately agrees to the plan, realizing that Guy knows how much the sacrificed lives mean to him. The Undertakers distract GHQ from guarding the dam during the operation, allowing Shu Inori, Guy, and Kenji to infiltrate the leukocyte control system. Segai sends Doril on his mecha to stop Shu from hacking the control system using Kenji's void, but Guy defeats Doril. However, Doril's damage to the control system results in leukocyte eye malfunctioning and descending into Tokyo. As Segai arrives, Guy makes a deal with him to use the pen Shu possessed, which Guy knew was a transmitter to use Leucocyte 3 to destroy Leucocyte Eye in exchange for Segai erasing all of Shu's data regarding the Undertakers. As Guy prepares to align the transmitter with the two Leucocyte satellites, Shu's desire to act prompts Inori to fuse her void with that of Kenji to create a powerful laser weapon which he uses to destroy both satellites. Having completed the operation, Shu accepts Guy's offer and joins the Undertakers as an official member. When Shu returns to school, there were still rumors that he was arrested by GHQ. They didn't know why he would be arrested, but they were still suspicious. Fortunately, the student council president Arisa Kuhuan, to dispel the rumors, fabricates a story that Shu found a GHQ member's phone and was interrogated. Shu also finds out that Yahiro has not been heard since his capture. After school, Haruka Ama, Shu's stepmother, returns home and welcomes Inori without even questioning what was going on. On the next night, Arisa and her grandfather, Akina Kuhuan, the head of the Kuhuan group, attend a party on a cruise ship. Guy, in order to acquire a new supply route, tips the event to the GHQ claiming they're performing illegal business. GHQ Colonel decides on using missiles to attack the ship, but Shu and Guy sneak aboard the ship all disguised as waiters. Meanwhile, Shu receives news about the GHQ near attack on the cruise, as Guy claims to Okina that he's there to sell Japan's future. To save the ship and its passengers, Guy tricks Arisa into coming to the upper deck, where Shu extracts her void in the form of a ball that projects a massive disc shield and uses it to defend against an incoming barrage of missiles. Observing Shu's heroic display, Akina agrees to form a partnership with the Undertakers for their new supply route. In order to be successful on a mission, Guy requests that Shu and Inori bring out a Tamadate, a classmate from the Motion Picture Research Club, to a beach resort on Oshima. Sauda's void is essential for that mission, therefore to avoid any suspicion Shu invites every member on the club for the trip. 
After enjoying himself with the others on the beach, Shu, according to his stepmother's wish, pays a visit to the grave of his father, Kirasuama, the foremost authority on the apocalypse virus prior to his untimely demise during the lost Christmas incident. Guy shows up and informs Shu that the mission is to infiltrate a GHQ base disguised as a shrine, but Shu must rely on Sauda's feelings for Inori to draw out his void. Later that night, as Sauda tries to confess his love to Inori on a sidewalk, Shu rushes in screaming and draws out Sauda's void, embarrassing him in front of the Undertaker's members hiding nearby. Sauda's void is the form of a camera that can open anything. When they enter the base's vault, they discover that the item they were searching for has vanished. Kato, who was Shu's father partner, infiltrated the vault using Kirasu's access card, stands in front of Kirasu's grave holding the meteorite that caused the apocalypse virus. On the next morning, despite their communication problems, Problems, Shu and Sauda make amends for their friendship. As everyone finally departs Oshima, Inori explains to Shu how his relationship with others affects their void. We discover that Yahiro manages to escape with his younger brother Jun Samukawa after taking refuge in an orphanage and evading Segai's pursuit. Ken unknowing about Hare's feelings towards Shu decides to help her by convincing Shu to go shopping with Hare. But at the moment Hare tries to confess to Shu on the train she ends up being accidentally interrupted by Yahiro's entrance with drugs. After Shu separates from Hare, Yahiro takes him to see Jun, explaining that they went into hiding following the incident in the isolation ward. Shu then contacts Ice to arrange transportation in an effort to help Yahiro and Jun escape. But Segai prepared a trap, expecting Shu to meet Yahiro he begins an operation to eliminate Jun, prompting Shu to forcibly extract Yahiro's void. Doro, using an enlave with a new weapon to target voids attacks Shu. However, when Jun stands up, she is targeted instead, causing the virus to migrate into the enlave. The enlave begins to malfunction. It starts attacking everyone, even the unconscious Yahiro. Shu stabs it with Yahiro's void. He ends up entering Jun's memories of the events preceding and following the lost Christmas incident with Yahiro. Jun begs Shu to use Yahiro's void to end her life while he still has fond memories of Yahiro, which Shu reluctantly does to save Yahiro's life. Managing to escape the chaos, Yahiro awakens. He asks for his sister but is horrified by Shu's confession that he murdered Jun. A few time passes and Shu's recurrent traumatic hallucinations make him run away during a mission. Due to all these panic attacks, Guy and Ice advise Shu to leave the Undertakers. His power as king is useless. Guy even claims there's a possibility for him to get the power if he kills Shu on spot. Meanwhile, after placing Kato under house arrest for stealing the apocalypse virus meteorite, Major General Yen intends to transport the meteorite overseas. The Undertakers know about the situation and decide to prepare an operation to attack the transport plane and retrieve the meteorite. But they only stepped into Segai's trap. The transport plane was unmanned. Shu tries to return back to his normal life, tries to go to school, but he cannot manage due to the traumatic experiences. When Hare attempts to comfort him, Shu tries to advance on her due to her feelings. She ends up slapping him because she recognizes that he is only using her as a replacement for Inori. Hare admits being present and witnessing Shu removing a hero's void to destroy the infected and lave. Kato, who stole the meteorite, is rescued by the antibodies. The same force captures Haruka and attacks GHQ and the Undertakers. At that same time, Segai, active a genetic resonance broadcast at Tokyo Tower, causing the meteorite to spread the apocalypse virus throughout Tokyo. Released, Kato finally observes the chaos from the GHQ headquarters and declares that he will complete what he began 10 years ago. Watch this next video. See you on the next one.